Peace and blessings, beautiful people. My name is Abril, your resident herbalist, and welcome back to my channel, Beauty, Herbs, and Tea, where we talk about all things tea, herbs, and resources to help you start your herbal business right now and start making money in your business right now. So y'all, I am back. <laughs> I am back to give you all sit down videos. If you have not watched my last video, make sure to go and watch it, okay? Last month, I took 12 beautiful souls to the Caribbean to learn all things Caribbean herbs, Caribbean culture, and farming. And y'all, it was amazing. I want to say, like, the best time that I have had on a vacation. There was bonding over hiking, herbs, herbal tea, culture, dancing, y'all. If you missed it, make sure to click up here to watch the travel vlog for that. Okay, let's go ahead and get into this video. So one of my most popular videos on YouTube is my how to start an herbal business or herbal tea business. I decided to come back and do like an updated video because a lot of you all have goals to start that business this year. If it's not a goal, go ahead and put it on your vision board, okay? <laughs> if you didn't do it last year, this is the year for you to start your business and get on track with your business. So in that video, which you can find right up here, I mentioned the general steps of starting a business, an herbal business. In this video, I actually wanna focus on the legal side of starting a business. I didn't go too much in depth with that video on the legalities of it. I did touch on a few things here and there, but there are a lot of legal things that you need to know when starting an herbal business, whether you're selling tea, salves, tinctures, syrups, anything, there are a lot of legal steps involved. So I'm gonna go ahead and get right into that. Now I do wanna make a public service announcement. I am launching a new cohort, a new live class cohort of my herbal business assistant course, January 22nd. The cohort starts on January 22nd. So I am going to guide you all step by step through starting your herbal business. I will hold your hand, I will be your herbal mentor, I will meet with you live virtually over Zoom and we will have live classes where you get to ask me questions about your business and starting your business. So literally, I will take you step by step in starting your business so you can get up and running in as little as three months, y'all. So the title of this video is How to Start an Herbal Business Legally. So again, there are a lot of legal nuances when it comes to starting an herbal business. I'm not going to go into the very, very basics that non-legal aspect of starting a business, whether it's finding your name, idea, all of that. Again, watch my previous videos to go for that. In this video, we're focusing on straight legal facts. So let's start with the very beginning, what you're going to need. So the first legal thing that you would need to do to start your business legally is choose your business structure. There are so many different options on structures that can apply for your business, whether it's an LLC, a S Corp, a sole proprietorship. So you want to make sure Sure you choose the structure that is right for you when starting off. In my course, in my business assistant course, I go into detail with which structure to choose for you. But again, you can find the information off on the internet if you want to do some personal research. So you want to choose your business structure. The next thing you want to do is to apply for an EIN. An EIN is your employee identification number. Okay, it's like your, your business social security number. You're going to have to give that number out a lot when making purchases, when doing business. Again, it's pretty much how your business is tracked with the IRS. <laughs> so again, it is your identification number for your actual business. You can apply online for that for free. All right, so we have our business structure. We have an EIN. The next thing you wanna do is look into getting licensing and permits. Now, I do want to give a disclaimer. Licensing and permits are specific to your state as well as your county. Everyone may not have the same licensing and permit requirement so always make sure to do your own research to see what your state requires this is going to give you a general overview of what you should look for so typically one of the things that is common to get when starting off is a fictitious business name also known as a DBA or doing a business as that is the name of your business now it doesn't hold much legal weight it's just you telling your state that hey I want to do a business under the name Bobby's Butters. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> if there's a Bobby 
Bobby's Butters out there. Hey, Bobby. Uh, <laughs> the next thing you may need is something called a seller's permit. This is a permit to sell in your state or in your county. So outside of a seller's permit, you might need some type of business license. Now, I have realized that this does vary depending on the state you are in. And honestly, it varies depending on the county. Some states and counties may require it, some don't. So when I was living in Los Angeles, the state did not require, California did not require a business license to operate a business, but the county of Los Angeles did. And keep in mind that these things may be called something different depending on your state as well. So next, those are all things that are general to starting a regular business. We have not really gotten into things that are specific to starting an herbal business. And so we're gonna get into that now. Something else that you will need to get into or look into is cottage food licensing. So cottage food licenses are actually laws that states have that govern how you sell food out of your home. So I actually break cottage food licenses down in my actual course. If that sounds really foreign to you, it is foreign to most people. Most people don't know that they have to abide by cottage food licenses. You can't sell anything unless you follow your state's cottage food license. Again, I mentioned a lot of this. I break it down. I break down the cottage food laws. I break all of that down in my course. So make sure to either do your own research or sign up for my course to find out more about that. All right, so we have cottage food license. And the next thing that honestly is the most important legal aspect of starting a herbal business is GMP and FDA laws. You cannot start a business selling something that is going to be ingested or applied topically without following GMP and FDA laws. GMP and FDA laws are a bunch of laws set up by the government to govern how you make, prepare, and document all the processes in your business business surrounded around this food item, this supplement, or this cosmetic item. So a lot of industries, whether it's drug, food, hospitality, a lot of those industries have to follow GMP and FDA laws. Now I'm not gonna lie y'all, it can be a little convoluted, okay? Not a little, but it can be a little convoluted and a little intense when trying to figure out exactly what GMP and FDA laws that you need to follow. Again, in my course, I break down all of the GMP and FDA laws that you will need to follow. Now, if you're like, well, what are those laws? An example of a GMP laws could be the verbiage that you use on your labels and your packaging. You can't just go out there saying anything, okay? You can't just say, I have this tea that's gonna cure this or cure that. That is an FDA no-no, okay? You can't say it. And so again, I break down the verbiage. I break down what you can and cannot say. I go over ways to rephrase certain things on your labels. I go over how you can be label compliant as well as compliant on your website. I pretty much help you not be on the FDA's radar. <laughs> so those are the general things that you would need to follow to start your business legally. Y'all, the sun is setting, so I had to get up and change my camera because I had this annoying glare <laughs> that was somewhere down there. Now I don't remember where I left off at. So I think I mentioned GMP and FDA laws. Um, I'm not sure if I already mentioned that that you do not need a license or certification to become an herbalist. Currently, the government does not regulate the practice of herbalism. So it does not require you to have a certification with the government, with your state to become an herbalist. So anywhere promising you certification here in America and Canada, it's a lie. You cannot get certified by a state or by your county or by the country to practice herbalism you may be able to obtain certification in other countries now let's cover some proposed laws some proposed and also passed laws by the FDA that may affect how you practice herbalism now and in the future. So I'm gonna go over two laws that are brand new, honestly, from 2022 and from 2023. So the first one is the proposed Dietary Listing and Supplement Act. Now I'm gonna actually read what that act is because 
is long. <laughs> so this act says that this will require companies to provide FDA with vital information about their products, including product names, a list of all ingredients, an electronic copy of the label, allergen statements, health and structure function claims, and more. Now, again, this is a proposed law. It has not been passed by the FDA, and I am kind of 50-50 on this one. While everything that they mention in that it's actually important to know and it will honestly actually help weed out a lot of people who are out here at selling herbs that should not be selling herbs there's a lot of people out here getting a master herbal certification in a month and now selling herbs and that's dangerous because herbs is medicine and herbs can cause a lot of serious harm if you don't know what you're doing and some people don't put allergen information on the label they don't put safety warnings so I honestly can see how this can be some benefit but when I say I'm a little bit 50 50 with this because I am not for the regulation of any herbal medicine because once you start having certain laws surrounding around herbs then it can trickle down into what you and I do and it can honestly affect herbalists and they could start requiring herbalists to now be licensed and jump through hoops to practice herbalism and I do not believe in any gatekeeping of indigenous knowledge. I do not believe in anything that should make it hard for you to learn indigenous knowledge when it comes to herbs and practice ancient indigenous medicine. I don't believe that. So while I see that this can have some benefit, a lot of benefit in the herbalist field to be more strict when it comes to the labels and things like that, again, I'm on the fence because I just don't want laws to be able to prevent people from this path if this is your calling and this goes to honestly the next law that actually has been passed and I'm gonna read that it's around around homeopathy so the FDA again has passed new regulatory practices surrounding around homeopathy now homeopathy is actually different than herbalism it's a practice of alternative medicine and homeopathy deals with substances that have been heavily heavily diluted so honestly the substance is almost not there to use that substance to now heal or cure somebody now what the FDA is doing let me read the FDA is prioritizing enforcement and regulatory actions for homeopathic drug products marketed in the US without the required FDA approval this means that homeopathy products could be subject to the same requirements as other drugs, including require FDA approval. Now let's talk about again how that could be a little dangerous. If the FDA is requiring homeopathic products, which is under the umbrella of alternative medicine, and herbalism is also under that umbrella, how soon do you all think the FDA will now say, herbalism, herbalists, herbal medicine, all these herbal things, teas, tinctures, all of this require you to be FDA approved. And to be FDA approved, y'all, it's a lot of steps to do that. And that will cut off so many people who want to practice this information that may have been passed down from their grandparents or their great grandparents. Now, again, I see where the caution arises because right now that product it doesn't require any FDA approval however again I am just not for the regulation of herbalism in general I do believe certain laws should be in place for health reasons and for safety reasons but once you start here in some years honestly I can see this trickling down to all of herbalism so let me know what y'all think about these proposed and passed new laws let me know if you think that herbalism should be regulated drop down in the comments what you think about this conversation and this topic so that's it you all I have covered all things to help you start your business legally in 2023 as well as things that you need to consider in your business that might affect your business legally in 2023 so again start the conversation down in the comments below don't forget if you need somebody to walk you hand by hand okay hold your hand 
and guide you through starting your herbal business step by step go ahead and sign up for the live cohort to my business course now okay not later now because there are limited spaces available and I will be cutting off the sign up list once the capacity is reached okay so I will see you all in my next video make sure to join the wait list for my next herbal retreat the wait list will be in the description box below we're going to Ghana Costa Rica Jamaica y'all all those things are on the list for 2023 all right that's all I have for you all today don't forget to like and thumbs up this video if you enjoyed it and don't forget to stay safe stay healthy and stay blessed and i'll see you all in the next video bye